بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه ثم اما بعد to proceed so today inshallah we will talk about al yaqeen we have bab al yaqeen and al manazil al sa'irin that's chapter uncertainty and uh, in the fiqh session we will finish kitab al hajj or the book on hajj uh, we have the part of the chapter 9 and uh, the entire uh, chapter 10. Chapter 9 uh, is on Hadi and Adahi, uh, the offerings and sacrifices, and uh, chapter 10 is on Aqiqa, which is the newborn uh, sacrifice. Uh, but now uh, we will talk about the Yaqeen, we will talk about certainty, something that everybody needs, and uh, no one... Uh, of us uh, could ever claim to have enough of. Every one of us needs more of it. Uh, so it, it is, it's a, particular, a particularly important chapter, a particularly important station. And the Sheikh also will explain why it is a particularly important station. Um, he said, Babul Yaqeen, chapter uncertainty. So Imam al-Harawi, rahimahullah, in his book, Manazil al-Sa'areen, said, قال الله عز وجل وفي الأرض آيات للمقنين uh, Allah the Almighty said and on the earth are signs for the certain ones the certain meaning the certain and faith the faithful uh, ones and that's in Surah Al-Zariyat then the Sheikh uh, said here اليقين اليقين مركب الآخذ في هذا الطريق وهو غاية درجات العامة وقيل أول خطوة للخاصة وهو على ثلاث درجات so اليقين مركب الأخذ في هذا الطريق certainty is the transporter of the traveler on this path or the embarker on, on this path يأخذ في الطريق to embark on a path so certainty is the transporter of the traveler on this path وهو غاية درجات العامة and it is the ending of the rankings of the commoners وَقِيلَ أَوَّلُ خُطْوَةٍ لِلْخَاصَةٍ And it was said that it is the first step for the elites. So he says, الْيَقِين مَرْكَبُ الْأَخِذِي فِي هَذَا الطَّرِيقِ الْيَقِين is the transporter, the carrier of the traveler on this path. The path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the stations that we will talk about, all the stations that we talked about, what will carry you through the stations, what will carry you to the stations, through the, through the stations, is what? Is your certainty in Allah and the hereafter. How could you have tawakkul without yaqeen? How could you have reliance without yaqeen? Uh, how could you have uh, patience, endurance without yaqeen? How could you have you know, proper self-reckoning and inaba and returning to Allah, uh, muhasaba and inaba and muraqaba, watchfulness of Allah, without having yaqeen, without having certainty in Allah and the hereafter. How could you have ihsan? How could you excel? How could you perfect your deeds if you do not have yaqeen? Um, so al-yaqeen is the transporter, is the carrier. It is the enabler that will take you to those stations and will take you through them. So that is why it's markab al fi hadha tariq it is the carrier, the transporter of the traveler on this path, the mount of the traveler on this path. He said, obviously, it is the ending of the rankings of the commoners because for the commoners, once you have established certainty, once certainty has have been established, he's saying that now you can embark on uh, the journey of the elites, the journey of al-Khasa, the journey of the, the chosen, the journey of the selected ones. And you can embark on this journey now that you're ready, that you have established yaqeen, and you have fulfilled the station of uh, yaqeen. So you're departing from the rankings of al amma to the rankings of al-Khasa. What will give you that impetus, what will give you that energy, that strength, that power to move now beyond the rankings of the commoners is the establishment of yaqeen, establishment of certainty in your heart. The fact that he said that it is the ending of the rankings of al-amma, 
and the beginning or the first step on the path of al khassa or the, or the elites does not take away from the station of Yaqeen. Keep in mind, he, the Sheikh himself said that you will not be able to fulfill any of those stations until you rise above it and you fulfill it from above. Uh, you you, you uh, basically move beyond it and then look back and fulfill that station. So it, it does not mean that at one point you will rise above the station of Yaqeen, you have fulfilled the station of Yaqeen, you don't need any more Yaqeen, even if you are Khassa. Is that clear? This is very clear. Uh, the Sheikh did say this in Muqaddimah, in the introduction, and it is, it is quite obvious. Like, who would say that I have enough yaqeen, I don't need more, when Musa said to his Lord, alayhi salam, said to his Lord, Rabbi arni anzar ilayk. Oh, my Lord, let me look at you. Let, let me see you. You know, who would say uh, that he does not need more yaqeen when Ibrahim, alayhi salam, said, Rabbi arni kayfa tuhi al Oh, my Lord, show me how you resurrect the dead. Uh, and if, if Musa alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam, we're talking about whom? We're talking about the, the, the best of the best, you know. The, the, there is actually a controversy about uh, who's the second best after our messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, uh, whether it is Ibrahim or Musa. So we're, talk, we're talking about the best of humanity. So the most elite of the elite. And they were, they were asking for more yaqeen. So Ibrahim had ilm al yaqeen had, you know, the certainty that's based on knowledge, that's based on uh, revelation. Uh, but he wanted to see it. And that it, it does not mean that he had doubts. It does not mean that he was not, that he was unsure. But he wanted ayn al yaqeen He wanted the yaqeen of eyesight. And Ibrahim alayhi salam was given, that was granted this. And he was granted this because he deserved it. And so if it would not be certainly appropriate of us to say, oh my Lord, show me how you resurrect the dead. And not, not only because he deserved it, but also the, the Ibrahim kana ummah, qanita lillahi hanifa. He was an ancient by himself. He, 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 he were to confront the, the tyranny of his uh, the time and you know the masses, the ignorant masses, tyranny and ignorance, like oceans of tyranny and ignorance alone to, to come up and to confront all of this alone. You, you do need that extra uh, amount of certainty, you know, the, the certainty of eyesight is what he wanted and what he was uh, given by his Lord. Therefore, there is always room for us to improve on our certainty and to improve on our yaqeen and we have to always uh, make uh, use of every opportunity, every chance that we can improve our certainty and our yaqeen. Um, and then we'll come back and talk about how to, you know, to build our yaqeen. Uh, the Sheikh then said, uh, ala thalati darajat, and it, wa, it was said, uh, or it is of three levels. Like usual, Sheikh divides everything to three levels. الدرجة الأولى علم اليقين وهو قبول ما ظهر من الحق وقبول ما غاب للحق والوقوف على ما قام بالحق الدرجة الأولى علم اليقين وهو The first level is the certainty of knowledge that is علم اليقين It's usually translated as knowledge of certainty uh, But here since yaqeen is the subject matter that is being described since we're talking about yaqeen uh, you know, I prefer to translate this as certainty of knowledge, meaning certainty that is based on knowledge. And then ayn al yaqeen certainty of eyesight, certainty that is based on sight, or certainty of sight. And then haq al yaqeen certainty that is based on reality, real experience, uh, which is certainty of reality. So he said al-ilm al yaqeen that is basically having the conviction, having the data, you know, receiving data and, how the, and processing this data and reaching to a point of certainty based on the data that you have and not just the intellectual data but the spiritual imports. So you collect all of this and uh, you, do, you develop that level of certainty that is called the ilm al yaqeen Now you have certainty that is based on certain knowledge. You have certainty that's based on certain knowledge, certainty in Allah that is based on knowledge. You feel that you're, you're completely certain that you have certain knowledge 
of the existence and greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beautiful names and attributes and you feel that you have certain knowledge of uh, you know the, the prophethood of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the, Quran, the message of the Quran and so on and that's, that is certainty, that's the first level of certainty, certainty that you have uh, acquired on the basis of certain knowledge, knowledge that is certain and he said, uh, to fulfill this uh, level, he said, Qabul ma zahra min al-haq. Accepting what is made obvious by the true one. Accepting Qabul ma zahra min al-haq. Or that is made obvious of the true one or by uh, the true one. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes obvious to you, the truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes obvious to you through the revelation, uh, or through his signs in the universe, or through his signs in the universe, whatever it appears to you, whatever is obvious to you. And certainly that uh, uh, includes the Quran and the Sunnah and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran and the Sunnah and the Sharia. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the Sharia, not only the Sharia of the Zahir, but the Sharia of the Batan also. You know, the, 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 the Sharia that guides our exterior and that guides our interior. And we have been given detailed instructions by the Prophet Sallallahu on how to uh, guide ourselves in, in, in this life. All of this is haqq that has appeared to us, that is obvious to us. The acceptance of this haqq will help us. Uh, with certainty. The acceptance of this haq will help us with certainty. And the acceptance of this haq is an indication of certainty. It is both an indication of certainty and a catalyst of certainty or like a, uh, an enabler of certainty. Uh, those who are certain, you will find them compliant. It, it obvious, right? Certainty is like your markab. It is your transporter, your carrier. And it will guide, it will lead you to uh, obedience, to, to, to ta'a. It will lead you away from uh, al-masiyah. If you have cer- certainty in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certainty in the hereafter, uh, true certainty also will keep, uh, keep you away from uh, even uh, uh, shortcomings uh, or suboptimal uh, behavior or sub-ethical behavior, not just ma'asi, but will keep you from anything that is... Uh, that is uh, unbefitting of a true uh, believer. So, qabul ma zahra min al-haqq. And then he said, wa qabulu ma ghaba al-haqq. Accepting what is hidden by the true one. That which has been hidden. Because some things have been made uh, clear to us. Some things have been hidden from us. Ma ghab, yani what has uh, been hidden. So, the... Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the punishment in the grave. And we don't know how. Uh, we don't know the true nature of this. Allah told us about things that will happen on the day of judgment. Allah told us about the angels and how, and, and how they, they uh, talk to each other and, uh, and, and so on. And Allah talked to us or told us about you know, the, the angels talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about the creation of Adam. All of these things. Uh, we don't know the, the, the sort of the real nature, the how, uh, the how and the real nature, the real es- essence of how all of this happens. How, how could you be punished in the grave? How could the angels sit you up in the grave? And keep in mind, people who have limited intellects, they'll think, you know, how could you sit up? Do, do you think that the Prophet ﷺ was thinking that the companions thought that you actually, like, you know, the, didn't the companions see the person go down in the grave and then they are the ones who put dust on top of them? So it, this is not like a matter of uh, physics where you say, like, you know, the grave, how could you set up when you're down there and there's dust all over you and we don't see that. You know. So the companions didn't ask these questions because they did not need to ask uh, these questions because... They were more intellectual. They were more intelligent, uh, like to, to ask than, than to ask uh, those questions. Those are ridiculous questions. You, you will have to be very limited intellectually to, to actually have issues with this, because this is certainly something that is beyond what is physical. These are ma'warayat. 
the metaphysical, you know, and, and intelligent people like Immanuel Kant, for instance, considered to be the, uh, the, the, the greatest philosopher in the last 200 years in the pure, pure critique of pure reason. He said, you, you don't examine the metaphysical with your intellect because it's incapable, because it's, this is not the proper tool uh, by which you examine the metaphysical. It is just not capable. Uh, so in, intelligent people would recognize this. The Sahaba, alayhim, never asked the Prophet, but how could you? Uh, no, because the, these are things that we just accept. We, we understand that uh, we have limitations, uh, the limitations of the physical. And when it comes to the metaphysical and when it comes to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, hid from us, and, and uh, we, this is knowledge that we just accept through the revelation. Whatever we receive through the revelation, we accept it, and we do not speculate beyond what we have uh, been told. We just don't speculate. We stop there. Um, and then the, the Sheikh Rahimahullah said, Well, wukuf ala maqama bil haqq and accepting all that is established about the true one. Well, wukuf ala maqama bil haqq, kama bihi min a'malihi wa asifatihi wa afalihi wa the attributes and the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything about Allah that you have been told by Allah or by His Messenger, you accept it without tahrif, without distortion, without ta'til, without denial, without uh, tamthil likening Allah to any of his creations without tashbih, without positing any resemblance between him and his creation. You just accept and move on. Amirruha kama ja'at. Our righteous predecessors used to say, Amirruha kama ja'at. Let them pass as they came. You know, the verses of the attributes. Without denial and without, uh, without asking the impossible, the, the question that is impossible to answer, the question of how, and without basically trying to examine or speculate about the true nature or the true essence of any of those attributes or uh, afal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, it, basically, daraja al-ula ilm al is about acceptance, acceptance of that which has been shown to you, acceptance of that which has been hidden from you. It is acceptance that is an indication of your certainty and that is a catalyst of greater and greater and greater certainty. That's an enabler uh, of greater and greater uh, certainty. Uh, then the Sheikh said, "What daraja to thaniya ayn al yaqin, wa huwa the second level is the certainty of sight, ayn al yaqin, the certainty of sight, and that is what Ibrahim alayhi salam asked for, and that is what Musa alayhi salam asked for. But what Musa alayhi salam asked for was a little bit beyond what he can get. Certainly, uh, the, the, this was not meant to be for a human being in this life." Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us to be of those who will uh, behold the divine in, in, in the hereafter, but th- this is not meant to be uh, something that you can get in, the, in, in this life. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed himself to, himself to the mountain. Uh, and the mountain could not uh, take it. But, but Musa, uh, but Ibrahim alayhi salam asked for something that Allah deemed uh, basically acceptable to, to, to grant to him, which is to show him how the, you know the resurrection, the, how the resurrection of the dead takes place. So, the, but certainty of sight is um, is different from certainty of knowledge. We we know about the jannah. The prophet told us about the jannah. We believe the messenger of Allah, and we believe that there must be an uh, like a uh, an abode beyond this, after this, where you know, good doers get to uh, basically rejoice in the fruits of what they have uh, uh, brought forth or what they have uh, done. Uh, and so we believe in the Jannah. But do you believe in the Jannah like the, the Prophet ﷺ who saw the Jannah? That, that cannot be the same. You know, to, that is, seeing is, is, is never, you know, like um, hearing. So... الدرجة الثانية he said المغني بالاستدراك عن الاستدلال as a second level and he will the sheikh will get it into being a little bit more abstract here he will say uh, this is about experiencing the divine where uh, the second level and that is when 
experiencing the divine replaces the need for evidence. Experiencing the divine replaces the need for evidence. Experiential faith replaces the need for evidence. You don't need any evidence. Like one of the, uh, the Aja'as of Naisabur said, you know, when they were told her, and, and, and we, we will say how what she said is, is true, but not necessarily absolutely true from, from every angle. When they told her about uh, Imam al-Razi having 1,000 uh, the, the leads or 1,000 proofs on the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on, and she, she said, I don't need any of them. He must have had 1,000 doubts to come up with 1,000 proofs. I have no doubts. Uh, so that elderly woman from Naisabur, so, you know, and, and, and that does not mean that she had more faith than Imam al-Razi. But, but the, the, the concept here, you could benefit from a statement like this without completely surrendering to the statement, to the, 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 the sort of the veracity of the statement from every aspect. But you could benefit from uh, some of the implications of that statement. So, so she did have the experience of faith to feel that she does not need to establish proofs because it's, to, to her it is, it's part of her second nature, you know, existence of God. What, who needs to establish proofs on the existence of God? I, I don't have any doubts. I don't need to have any answers to any misconceptions because I don't have misconceptions. They don't just, they don't come across my mind. I don't have them. So, but so part of this is when experiential faith and was when you when you realize the truths and fruits of iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that Allah puts in your heart that the prophet sallallahu told us of uh, and then you don't need uh, proofs uh intellectual proofs and then he said um He's descri- still describing the second stage here, which is Ayn al Yaqeen, the certainty of sight. And he said, وَعَنِ الْخَبَرِ بِالْعِيَانِ And uh, so it, that is when witnessing takes the place of hearing. Witnessing takes the place of hearing. And now we have traveled the path, and you have seen what has been described to you before on this path, on this journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the stations, the fruits of the stations, and, and so on. So whatever has been, uh, whatever you've, you heard before, now you saw it, and certainly layan uh, will suffice and will replace now hearing because you're uh, seeing it. And then he said, وَخَرْقُ الشُّهُودِ حِجَابَ الْعِلْمِ uh, and that is when, you know, shuhud, the beholding of the divine, pierces the veil of knowledge. Pierces the veil of knowledge. Kharq al-shuhud, hijab al-ilm. That is when the beholding the divine pierces uh, the veil of knowledge. Uh, and that certainly never means that any shuhud will be counter to or in conflict with the knowledge. It is... <laughs> It will complement, it will enhance, it will uh, elucidate, it will clarify the knowledge that you receive, the knowledge of al-sam'iyyat or the knowledge of the textual uh, proofs or the knowledge of the text of the revelation. That knowledge of the text of the revelation will will help you reach a certain level, but without your effort, without your uh, uh, experience, your spiritual uh, basically ascent uh, to higher levels, that knowledge will have limitations. Right or wrong? Will have limitations. Knowledge will have limitations. Uh, how many a knowledgeable person that has not been able to realize all the fruits of that knowledge because they don't have experience, they don't have spiritual experience, or they, they have limited spiritual experience, so they get as much as they deserve. You know, They get what they deserve. Yeah, but, but certainly the, the, the people who uh, uh, use this knowledge, reap the proof, fruits of the, of the knowledge, and internalize that knowledge and act upon that knowledge, both on the exterior and in the interior, those people will uh, pierce the limitations of knowledge or pierce the hujub or the veils of, uh, of knowledge, the, that is the limitations of uh, knowledge. And then he said, 
والدرجة الثالثة حق اليقين وهو إصفار صبح الكشف The certainty of reality الدرجة الثالثة حق اليقين Certainty of reality And we said there you have the certainty of knowledge Certainty that's based on knowledge You know, all of you heard about China, right? All of you believe, in, believe that China exists. Have you ever seen China? Have you ever experienced China? Like you know, most of you, but some of you may have, you know, but not necessarily. So, uh, but, but is there a difference between this and between seeing China? And is there a difference between this and living in China? So you've been told about the Jannah. Is it different when you first see the, the, uh, the gates of the of the Jannah, well, it's different. But when you get in there, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those deserving of it. When you get in there, is that, and, 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 and then everything that you have been told, you, you've been just told about things that whatever you've been told, لَيْسَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا الْأَسْمَاءَ As Ibn Abbas said, nothing is in the Jannah is like anything in the dunya, anything that you've been told. You know, because the Prophet has had to use terminology that, that is familiar to us. But nothing in the Jannah is like anything in the dunya except just the names. So when you get to experience all of this, that was, had never come across the heart of a human being, when you get to experience this, that is haq al right? That is haq al the certainty of reality. What our share of that station in this life, uh, certainly we cannot have the certainty of reality of the Jannah and certain reality, you know, uh, of the unseen, certainty of reality of the unseen because we have not experienced this and this particular station. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, says in Madaraj, and I believe this is completely accurate, that this particular station is reserved in this life for the greatest of Allah's uh, messengers, you know, the, uh, Musa, Ibrahim, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, al-Isra wal maraj certainty of reality here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to have a taste of this certainty of reality. And, you know, uh, Kareemullah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to Musa, or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the resurrection to Ibrahim, certainty of reality. So, but for, for us, the certainty of reality of, of, of us is basically limited to the experience of faith. You know, whatever truths and fruits of faith or these stations that we have been told by the Prophet ﷺ about, and we get to experience them. We get to experience them in reality and feel the 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 basically the, the fruits of them, this would be our share of haq al yaqeen in this life, you know, as uh, commoners or even elites uh, uh, in this life. The Sheikh said about haq al yaqeen is far subh al kashf, it is the shining of the light of disclosure, the shining of the light of Disclosure. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to you realities, reveals to you scenes uh, that have been veiled from you, that you have been barred from, uh, that is isfaru subh al kashf, the shining of the light of disclosure. Thumm al khalas min kulfat al yaqeen, reddance from the burden of certainty. Reddance from the burden of certainty. Certainty would, would be like a chore, like uh, it would be like uh, a pursuit, a quest, something that you want to get to, something that you want to have, you want to acquire. So you put in a lot of effort to reach certainty. And those who strive for our cause, we shall guide them to our path. You put in a lot of effort. And certainty will then require of you compliance, it require for you adherence to the sunnah and, and, and so on. These are considered the burdens in earlier stages, in earlier phases. Now certain that certainty becomes purely a carrier for you, like uh, uh, will, will an energizer will give you power without any kulfa, without any burden. Because that is when our righteous predecessors used to say, like a, I, you know, I had to strive to uh, do the night prayers for 20 years, and then I enjoyed them for 20 years. So 20 years of striving 
to get to the point where the night prayers become uh, a source of comfort and joy and strength. So that is, the, that is when people move from the takalif being a burden to them being a source of power, energy, and joy. Uh, then he said, ثُمَّ الْفَنَاءُ فِي حَقِّ الْيَقِينَ And then the solution into the knowledge of certainty or the certain truth. Uh, the solution uh, uh, into the certain truth, and that is self-annihilation. And we did address this issue before, and I'm not going to repeat, uh, we're not going to talk about this issue now, because we want to talk, we want to uh, basically uh, descend a little bit to our reality and just talk about how we... Uh, build certainty from scratch, from, you know, the, the bottom up, from the ground uh, up. Uh, because uh, certainly we're, we're, we're not with the sheikh where he is, and we want to address our own needs, our own needs. Uh, so I wanted to say that, you know, when it comes to certainty, when it comes to certainty, some people think that certainty is by uh, dispelling every doubt that you come across. It is by the ability to uh, refute every misconception, every misgiving about Islam, and to dispel all the doubts in your mind. And that is your way to certainty. That is not a, that is not a proper way to certainty. That is not a holistic way to certainty. This retail approach to certainty is completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. These are two different pursuits, two different quests. You know, refuting uh, misconceptions or fighting doubts is one thing, and building certainty is a different thing. They are interdependent because you do need, uh, you, 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 you can't build certainty and uh, basically ignore the doubts that are under the surface. We will have to address them. They are interdependent, but they are uh, separate uh, quests or pursuits. So today we'll, we'll talk a little bit, and we may take a little bit more time, and we'll borrow it from Fiqh, but we'll talk uh, about building certainty versus uh, fighting doubts. Uh, or we'll talk about both, but, you know, First, building uh, certainty. In, in order for you to, to build certainty, uh, you will have to have the proper information, proper data, and uh, proper tools uh, as well, or the, the, you know, the input and the ability to make use of that input, the proper input. These are intellectual data, and spiritual imports, input that is coming to you that will need to be now processed. Uh, and you have to have the ability to make use of this input. And I don't want to say process because it may sound just like too dry or intellectual, but to reap the benefits, the fruits of that input that you're getting because it is not only intellectual, but it is also spiritual. And just re refuse to be reduced into like matter, mindless matter, or refuse to be reduced into matter with intellect because you also have a heart and you also have a spirit. And the role of the heart and the role of the spirit cannot be ignored or overlooked in this pursuit or in this quest. You have like uh, more meaning to you as a human being uh, than you know, uh, the rest of the species. It, it should be obvious to you uh, that there is some meaning beyond just being like the rest of the plants or the rest uh, even of uh, the animals. Uh, so now the, intel the, the data that you will be receiving, the data comes from two sources. One source is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this universe and sent us a message. You are part of this uh, universe, and you look around you, and there is a message, there is a claimant of, you know, uh, the creation of this universe. There is a claim to the creation of this universe. There is a wonderful, magnificent, you know, astounding 
universe around you and there is a claimant to the uh, creation of this universe and the, so, who sent you a message. So these are your sources. These are your sources, uh, to, uh, sources of input uh, to this yatim. And the spiritual imports that we will talk about, because the, you know, he, he sent you a message and he created the universe for you, and he also sends you those uh, that, that that come to your heart. So the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you uh, is, is your way to yaqeen. And the way of the Qur'an is, is, is beautiful. It is simple and it is superior. Complexity and superiority are not mutually inclusive, or simplicity and simplicity and superiority are not mutually exclusive. In fact, you know the the, the most obvious facts need to be the most simple ones to grasp. Uh, so, so the the way of the Quran in addressing the various issues, like keep in mind, you sit down and. It's not about like linguistic jargon. It's not about you know look, looking or sounding too technical or too advanced. So you could always talk about cosmological evidence, and teleological evidence, and theological evidence. But all of this is in the Quran. But it is you know in a very simple way. Is the cosmological evidence? Have they been created without a creator, or have they created themselves, or did they create the heavens and the earth, or are, are they in control, or do they have the treasures of your Lord, or and or are they in control? Uh, teleological evidence, you know, all of the invitation to ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth is about this, you know, uh, is, is about the, the, the wisdom. Look, look at this. There must be a wisdom. And there, there must be, you know, uh, there must be a purpose and there must be a wisdom. So you, you examine, you reflect, you learn the Quran and you reflect on all of the discourses in the Qur'an with the disbelievers about the existence of Allah, about the greatness of Allah, about the names and attributes of Allah, about, you know, uh, the oneness of Allah also, which is very important. You know, how could you find anything that's more powerful than Had there been gods other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in them, they would have been in full and complete corruption. That is answering the possibility of equal gods, equal gods controlling the same domain. Absolutely. When you have equal willful agents controlling the same domain, uh, can you imagine willful agents with separate wills controlling all of them, controlling the same domain, and they're all equal? The corruption would prevail. That is basically giving uh, like a plane to two pilots and giving them equal uh, authority over the plane, or two, uh, like one ship to two captains, or, or three, or four, or five, or so on. Um, and قل لو كان معه أليه كما يقولون إذا لابتغوا إلى ذي العرش سبيلا say say لو كان معه أليه كما يقولون if there are truly gods as they ascribe to him, uh, gods beside him, as they ascribe to him, uh, they would have all sought um, I mean, the the means to the pleasure of the Lord of the Throne. You know, the large. So the Lord of the Throne. So that is answering the the the, 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 the hypothesis of gods, so several gods of unequal uh, power. And if if they are inferior and they would be seeking the pleasure of the Lord of the Throne, they are not gods. They can be gods. How do you describe them as gods if they are inferior, and they are dependent on the the Lord of the Throne? Uh, for their power, for their uh, like influence, or uh, they cannot be described as gods. So both the hypothesis one is is false, and two is false. They can't be equal. Gods controlling the separate willful agents controlling the same domain, uh, corruption prevails, and they cannot be unequal gods because that idea itself is self contradictory. It's it's, it's oxymoronic. They're, if they are inferior, they are not gods. So that is the way of the Qur'an of explaining things. So we need to reflect and we need, need to study the Qur'an and reflect on uh, you know, the, the Qur'anic message and the way of the Qur'an in uh, pointing these things out to us. So listening to the Qur'an attentively with uh, open minds and open hearts and reflecting. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the Qur'an is enough. In Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah said, 
had it not been enough for them that we had sent down to you Al-Quran, Yutla uh, alayhim, to be recited to them. Inna fi dhalika al-rahmatan wa dhikra li qawmi yu'minun. Certainly in this there is mercy and dhikra, reminder for people of faith, for people of faith, people who are uh, worthy of having faith, people who are deserving of faith. Uh, it, it would have been enough for them. It would have been enough for reasonable people who are worthy of faith to have received the Qur'an and to be, be told of all of the, you know, uh, of these uh, proofs uh, by the Qur'an. So uh, the Qur'anic way of explaining things, and I provided the link for you inside the, the document that I sent you. I provided the link for, to, for you to... Uh, like a, a Yaqeen Institute paper on uh, by Justin Parrott on you know the Quranic way of uh, addressing the, the you know the existence of God um, and, and and certainly the Quranic way is the superior way. It does not mean that you you don't read uh, you know you, it does not mean that you do not seek every possible way to convince people who have doubts or to talk to, to people uh, who may not be Muslim or who may be Muslim. But, but, but certainly, like, uh, fill yourself up with the Quranic way because that should be your foundation. Uh, that should be your foundation, and it is very important. Had it not been enough for them, uh, is it not enough for them that we had, or sufficient for them that we have sent down the book to you, to be recited to them? The Science of Prophethood, and there is a Yaqeen Institute paper also by Muhammad al on uh, the Science of Prophethood. Uh, I provided the link for you uh, to that uh, paper, and, and, and the, it's, it's a very well-written paper, and it's a series. It's, you know, pro, uh, proofs of prophethood. It, it is a series, and I really recommend for you to read the entire series on the proofs of his prophethood, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and as, uh, so all of this is intellectual, intellectual data, you know, that, that you would need to uh, reflect on. Uh, and, but, but don't underestimate the importance of the spiritual imports, the ahwal, the conditions. You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets you taste the sweetness of faith, that is important in your pursuit of certainty. That is important in this quest. When you feel the comfort, when you feel the stability, when you feel the uh, sweetness of faith, uh, that you're being told, as human beings, that is what works for us. You know, and it, uh, the ample research has been, has documented and confirmed that uh, faithful people live happier lives and healthier lives. So the, the spiritual imports are important. Make use of them. Make use of the ahwal, the conditions, the spiritual states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants to you and make use of the warida, uh, you know, the insights, uh, the, the, the visions, the insights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants to you and the disclosures, the kashf, uh, you know, which, which does not, which, it is not limited to people at the top of the pyramid. Some people may get cash to enable them, to help them, to, su- to support them on the path uh, to certainty. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this and uh, be, rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to, to guide your heart. Because dua is extremely important. Dua is extremely important. Uh, now, then, so, so, then you're, 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 you're paying attention attentively or you, you are listening attentively to the wahi, the, the Qur'an, the sunnah, and reflecting on the, prof, the proofs of prophethood and so on and so forth, making use of al-ahwal and waridat. But you're also reflecting on this universe around you. It, 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 is, it is important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that this is your, one of your avenues to certainty as well. In Surah Fussilat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we will, we will show them our signs. We will show them our proofs. In the horizons, astrology. 
وفي انفسهم ان ذم سيلز يو نو ميديسن بيولوجي اول اوف ذات حتى يتبين لهم انه الحق until they they come to realize that it is the truth until it appears to them and they come to realize that it is the uh, truth حتى يتبين لهم انه الحق ولم يكفي بربك انه على كل شيء شهيد isn't it, isn't it not enough that your lord is a witness over all things so that particular quest to certainty through reflection on the signs of the universe ayat manzura wa ayat maqru'a ayat masmu'a the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be uh, witnessed uh, or can be heard ayat of the quran can be heard can be read and the ayat in the safahat al kawn in the pages of this universe can be uh, seen uh, but this particular quest is is not limited to muslims you 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 don't only need muslims to point these things out to you and if you have uh, competent scientists or competent even philosophers that will point some things out to you and that will enable you with a, a particularly for for many of you as dua in your capacity of of dua and keep in mind i'm not just talking to you in your individual capacity because you know hopefully you know i, I don't need to, to talk to you about fighting doubts in this much detail as as i will well in your individual capacity because i hope that you don't have you know i hope for all of us that we we don't have this but in your capacity as dua you need to learn this so, so that when you talk to people you know how to uh, talk to them and if certain people when when need to, to uh, uh when need to be uh, you need certain a certain language to to talk to certain people to convince certain people learn it to talk to them any language learn greek learn german uh learn also the language of the philosophers the language of the lay persons don't talk to a, a lay person like philosophers would uh talk to each other and don't talk to a philosopher like a lay person learn the language that is appropriate for each one to convince them uh and when when you try when you're talking to them leave your ego outside the door because once you bring your ego in with you it will ruin everything it will ruin everything so it, you're just you're full of concern for them compassion and concern for them and humbleness and you're trying to figure out and also an anxiety about yourself if you're talking to someone who has doubts you're also full of an anxiety that the one who did the delight of faith in his heart may may do the same thing or put it out completely uh, for you so you're just you're coming in with an anxiety with compassion with concern and uh, you 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 leave your ego outside the door and so like i said you know because you may find why am i saying this because you will find me using like people like anthony flu for instance quite often fred hoyle or statements from Fred Hoy and Arendt of Anthony Flew or Francis Bacon or uh, quite often you don't say well, well, don't we have enough yes we do have enough but but you know uh, uh, it, it is different particularly if you talk to someone who's not muslim particularly if you talk to someone uh, from uh, from here for instance and the, the, they have particular uh aversion to uh, sort of like eastern philosophy and they have particular preference for western philosophy uh, someone like anthony flu like one of the uh, sort of most popular uh, atheists of the second half of the 20th century converting back to uh, theism at, at least uh, uh, w- w- it would be helpful to to read his book and you know there is a god and he provides you a link to his book uh because he asks very like he 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 asks very important questions he poses very important questions to atheists and to the deniers of the existence of god so someone who spent his entire life you know like an oxford professor of philosophy and not only oxford but you know professor who taught philosophy in many many places uh who was the most notorious most known uh atheist uh, of his time converting back back to theism i think it you know i i think what uh he has to tell us is important to to, to hear from him um so so um for instance he said uh how can a universe of mindless matter produce beings with intrinsic ends uh that's that's an important reflection that's the sort of 
part of that's teleological uh, proof. But 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 certainly in his book he poses questions in a language that those people would relate to. Uh, so it is important to equip yourself and to arm yourself with with uh, all the tools that you need to help out people, to help the people out with compassion, because people those people deserve uh, your compassion. How can a universe of mindless matter produce beings with intrinsic ends, intrinsic purposes? You know, it, it, like think about it. You have you have purposes, you have ends, you have goals in your life, you have thoughts, you have feelings uh, that. Uh, cannot be explained by matter and cannot be explained by chemistry, cannot be explained by physics. So th this is also important. And, and this book is important and there are uh, other uh, so resources as well that would be helpful in uh, this uh, regard. Then, so this is the data. When we said this is intellectual and spiritual data and you will make use of all the data, but how you, will you make use of them if you don't have the proper tools? Proper tools. Proper tools, not only the intellect, but also the spirit. And proper tool, the, the most important of all, is a tawfiq, it is guidance by Allah. The ability to make benefit of this, the ability to overcome your own biases, to your own whims, your own desires. Because after all, committing to a religion is not easy. It's not easy, it's restraining, right? It is somewhat burdensome. There, there is a burden. You commit to a religion, you'll have the commandments, the prohibitions, this, that. Uh, sometimes stigma also for certain religions at certain times and certain places. So committing to a religion is not easy. How could you, how could you be deserving? How could you reap the benefits of this data and you know, be deserving of guidance and overcome your biases and your whims and desires and the social pressure, societal pressure, and so on, uh, you will have to be, you'll have to have that ability, that capacity. Uh, you will have to have that capacity. How do you develop that capacity? Uh, certainly by, you know, dua and zikr and remembrance of Allah and compliance. These are, these are your, your most important tool. Ask him to guide you. Ask the one who created you. Ask the one who made you. Like, uh, what, who would be the first person an infant turns to for sustenance, food, security, guidance? Mother, right? Mom. That you, you turn to your mother. Uh, because you, you came from her, you know. Like, you know, you were connected to her by this cord, the umbilical cord. You came from her. You, you go back to her. And in this pursuit... Uh, in this quest for in guidance, you, you go back to your to, you go back to the one who created you, and you ask him with tadarru, with inkisar, with brokenness, and sincere uh, 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 hope for uh, guidance that that he would guide you, and you remember him. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said towards the end of Surah Al Baqarah, "Taqul Allah wa yalimukum Allah, Allahu bi kulli shayin alim, and fear Allah, and Allah will teach you, and Allah is all knowing of all things." Allah is all-knowing of all things. But, but the point is, fear Allah and Allah will teach you. What comes first is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To be deserving of this guidance, to be deserving of this support, to be deserving of Allah holding your hand through the difficulties of this life and the turmoil and the hardships of this life and ups and downs of this life and not, keeping you on the path, not losing sight of your destination, you do need His support. You know, how could you be? How could you? Sh how could you be so? How could we be so wicked with people? How could we shortchange people and abuse people and you know exploit people and cheat people and think that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would then show us mercy? Didn't the Prophet ﷺ tell us, "Arhamuna arhamuhum arrahman, arhamu man fil ardi, arhamkum man fil sama, arrahimuna arhamuhum arrahman"? The merciful ones will be shown mercy by the most merciful. Show mercy to those on earth that the one in the heavens may show you mercy. So how could you expect, you know, every time you do, you, you, like, you, you abuse someone, you know, whether it is a spouse or a friend or a neighbor or an enemy or adversary, every time you abuse someone, you, you're, you're basically 
uh, making yourself less deserving of his tawfiq and his guidance and his compassion and his nazar. You know, he, uh, if, if he turns his sight away from you, you're doomed, you're destroyed. Uh, that is the, the side of compassion and ayn uh, al you know, the eye of mercy and the eye of compassion. So, But it is not easy. You think it is easy, and it's, it's, it, it, it should not be easy. You know, and the people think that they will be left uh, after saying that we believe without being tried. There will be trials because that's the nature of life. In Surah Al Ankabut, and at the end of Surah Al Ankabut, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. You know, that's the beginning. At the end of it, Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَ أَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And those who strive for our cause, we shall guide them to our paths. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah is uh, with the uh, al-muhsineen. Those who excel uh, in pleasing their Lord. So, uh, show him that, you're, that you are deserving. And this requires effort, and this requires mujahada. But show him that you are deserving because without having the right tool, you could collect as much information as you can. You could gather as much data as you can. You could have whatever you want. You could reflect as much as you want. On, you could be the best phys- physicist or chemist or biochemist or this or that. You could be a biologist of renown, and then you talk about the abiogenesis. You talk about, you know, the abiogenesis, things come in, you know, life coming from chemical, uh, sort of uh, random chemical uh, reactions. Uh, Anthony Fluko, you know, he says, even if we believe in this theory, you would need, you know, more than the life of this universe just for using combinations and permutations for this to, 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 to create like one strand of DNA by using combinations and, and permutations, you do need uh, more than the entire life of this universe for this to have happened randomly by just like random chance. So the people think this way. So some people think this way and they are smarter, more intelligent. So be, be more deserving of guidance than them. Now this is building certainty. Now resisting doubts, resisting doubts. There is also a Yaqeen Institute paper on mapping out doubts in our community, in our Muslim community, and they classify doubts into three different categories. There are doubts that stem from um, social and moral concerns. There are doubts that stem from scientific and philosophical concerns. There are doubts that stem from personal trauma, personal trauma. Uh, and and this, the, the papers uh, indicated that, that most of it uh, comes from personal uh, issues and social issues, uh, not scientific or philosophical concerns or contentions uh, or anxieties or apprehensions that would cause them uh, to doubt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to doubt uh, Islam as a religion. So mapping out doubts is, is important. For you as, as a da'iyah, mapping out the doubts within our community is important because you'll have to, to know where this is coming from, the sources of this. So social and moral doubts, it is basically when the society, when the norms of the society are in conflict with the teachings of the deen. Sometimes it is because you don't know the deen. Sometimes because there is a real conflict. Sometimes you're, you may be mistaken about the deen and what the deen says. Uh, or sometimes you may be mistaken about the application of so, certain teachings within the context, uh, within modern context. Uh, you don't have enough knowledge, you know, the bottom line, you don't have enough knowledge, whether about the actual teachings or their application, you don't have enough, but sometimes there is true conflict, and here the, tr- the true conflict will have to be addressed. You know, certain teachings that, you know, particularly our sisters now and with the spread of feminism and, and so on, certain teachings about the, the different roles of men and women that they may uh, have uh, difficulties with or the, some level of discomfort with. Um, but most of the social and moral uh, concerns or, or contentions that, that, uh, that people have difficulty with come from the behavior of the, of the believers. Uh, most of it comes from the behavior of the believers. Uh, you know, religious people and their hypocrisy, religious people and their intolerance, 
and, and things of that nature. It is important that we realize that uh, that we could be contributing to this tragedy, you know, the the, the, the spread of, of doubts uh, within our community. Uh, much of it could be related to societal pressure, uh, like I said, but but also we could be contributing. Uh, but having like a, a negative experience, a negative encounter with a religious person, particularly for someone who's far away from their religion and sees you as a representation of their religion, having a negative encounter, particularly if you're a da'i or imam or something that is even more uh, uh, expected uh, to be abiding, to be compliant, to buy the teachings of the religion, could be detrimental, could be devastating to someone's faith. Uh, so, so you have to pay attention because you do not want to be sabd on sabirullah. You do not want to be one who diverts people away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the last thing that you want to do to someone or you want to do to yourself. Then there is this group of uh, sort of like scientific and, and philosophical concerns or, or apprehensions that... Uh, cause people to have some doubts or uh, some difficulties with faith. You know, they, they mentioned creation versus uh, evolution. They mentioned the existence of God. They mentioned uh, the problem of evil. And on the problem of evil, there is also a, like a Qin Institute paper by Muhammad uh, uh, uh Yeah, well, that drew on uh, Dr. Sami Amri's uh, book in Arabic uh, that I, I, I provided the link for, uh, to, uh, for, for you in the, in the document that I sent you. But it is, it is, really, uh, it is really important that, that you read this if you are a da'iya. If you don't have any particular issues, you don't need to worry about it. But if you are a da'iya, you do, you do need to worry about everything because you need to learn about things be proactively. But if you don't have particular issues with this, you don't necessarily need to read it. Uh, why, do, why people suffer? Uh, the, the existence of God and the problem of evil. Uh, so, uh, and, and then there are certain uh, issues, there are certain concepts also, or certain teachings in Islam that people may find uh, uh, so, n- n- some difficulty in reconciling with uh, some scientific or philosophical uh, concepts that they believe in. Uh, now, the third group was personal trauma, personal trauma. And that's a big group, and that, that, that's a big source of doubt. doubt. A failure of relationships uh, could actually trigger people into uh, like a psychological uh, down spiral that, that could lead them eventually to losing their faith. Uh, being unhappy in general and feeling that religion is not, that, that did not work for them, did not make them happy. Uh, loss of loved ones. Uh, there are many personal traumas that could, could lead people to this down spiral. So this is the mapping out of doubt. So I like to converse things. I like to make sense of things. That, uh, in my classifications, I like things to have some solid, tangible... Uh, uh, foundation for this, you know, for classification. So I, I, I would say that we could converge all of this to emotional and intellectual. And sometimes there is a mixture of both that you are unable yourself to, uh, to identify. But it is emotional or intellectual. There is the emotional group of, you know, sources of doubt, and there is an intellectual one. So scientific and philosophical questions, such as the problem of evil, the existence of God, creation versus evolution, uh, you know, or, the, or these issues, certain concepts, these, these are intellectual uh, issues that you need to address. And, and then there is the emotional ones, the personal trauma, you know, your, your, your de- depression and anxiety, uh, obsessions with certain things, or uh, so, so, societal pressure, uh, that is causing you to cave in and, and, and so on. These are emotional uh, reasons. Sometimes it's, it's a mixture. Sometimes you're un, unable to sort things out. Uh, or, uh, you know, the, your, your personal trauma or the societal pressure created the medium, pri- uh, 
proper medium for doubts to grow. It's like a culture where germs grow. Created the proper medium for uh, those doubts uh, to grow. And then you, you are yourself confused. You think you have intellectual contentions against certain teachings, you know, but in fact, in reality, it is not. In reality, you're under pressure, uh, you, like you feel like a misfit in your workplace or you're under pressure for, for this or that reason, and you just, you're just tired. And then, you know, you do not want to basically uh, confess. You do not want to admit to that intellectual in timidity, so you want to make it look better. So you want to say that I have intellectual, intellectual or philosophical reservations against this or that. It's a way for you out of admitting uh, the, the real source of your doubt, whether it's personal or societal or something else. So uh, th th this is it. So what, what advice, do we, advice do we have now for individuals and for, for us collectively as a community? How do we address the, the doubts within our community? As individuals, if you are confronted by doubts or if you encounter uh, doubts, certainly for the vast majority of people that are in this room, uh, we're talking about, we're ta I'm talking to you in your capacity as the, the IEs and, you know, teachers and, and so on and be activists and people who, will, who may encounter uh, people who have doubts. I'm not talking to you in your personal capacity only. So first thing that we have to, first thing that we have to, to tell people is that you should not be really seeking out doubts to dispel them. You should not be seeking out doubts to dispel them. That, that's not the proper way. Like I said, always build certainty before refuting misconceptions and misgivings uh, or fighting doubts. Build up certainty first. Build up certainty first. Do not premature, prematurely expose yourself to doubts and misconceptions and misgivings about the dean when you are so like weak and frail and unable to uh, you know, stand the test of, of, uh, of the, these encounters or this exposure. Uh, this is like a, like a sick man, you know, who really sick man or woman who uh, just uh, injects themselves with like hundreds of potent germs to figure out if their immune system would actually be able to handle it. You know, that, that is unwise. Wise people do not do that. So no premature exposure. Build up your certainty first. Be deserving of guidance first. And then... Uh, if you are a student of knowledge, if you are a scholar, you do need to learn about these things so that you can help people out uh, of uh, their uh, anxiety or their uh, skepticism. Their skepticism. Okay, so that's uh, the first one. So the second thing that I wanted to say is a bushra. It's glad tidings. It's actually good news. Here's some good news for you. If you do encounter doubts, if you did encounter doubt or you do encounter doubts, uh, don't think, you know, don't think that uh, this is necessarily, this is necessarily a punishment. It could be a trial, a test, uh, and you could, if you pass it, you can come out stronger in faith. You can come out stronger in faith. You know, Imam Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, you know, something that is really uh, encouraging for people who may encounter, who, who would encounter doubt or may encounter doubt. He said, فَمَنْ كَانَ مُسْتَنَدُ تَصْدِيقِهِ وَمَحَبَّتِهِ أَذِلَّ كَثِيرَ تُجِبُ الْيَقِينَ Whosoever, you know, uh, whoever bases his tasdiq, his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his mahabba, his love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on many uh, proofs or evidences uh, that w that result in that bring about certainty. Many proofs that bring about certainty. لم يكن كمن كان مستنده دون ذلك من الأسباب. Or as he said, he is not like someone who has uh, less proofs or his his the, whose basis of belief uh, is less than that. You know. Uh, so so the, the 1,000, Imam al-Razi's 1,000 proofs 
Imam Taymiyyah here is saying that this actually did help Imam al-Razi, that this actually made him superior to that elderly woman. Uh, if, uh, yeah, because the, the, the uh, he said from Karam Mustanad, Tasdiqi or Mahambati Adilla Kathira Tujibu Al Yaqeen, Wa Tubayinu Fasad as Shubha Al Arida, Lam Yakun Kaman Hua Duna Zalik or Kamaka. So uh, not only that it is Adilla Kathira, it is many uh, proofs uh, that will bring about certainty, but also that will reveal the invalidity of the passing uh, misconceptions or misgivings that will re- reveal will show the invalidity of the mass, uh, passing uh, misconceptions and passing uh, misgivings. Uh, and he said, بَلْ مَنْ جُعِلَ لَهُ عُلُومٌ ضَرُورِيَّ لَا يُمْكِنُهُ دَفْعُهَا Whoever was granted uh, knowledge or exposure that, he, that compels him to believe, to, to compels him to faith, or compels him to believe or to have faith, uh, Whoever has been granted knowledge or exposure that compels them, compelling knowledge or compelling disclosure or exposure, uh, is not like one who encounters uh, shuba. Uh, is not like one who encounters misconceptions and misgivings, and then he actively, willfully, and actively seeks to dispel them through nazar and bahth, nazar and bahth, reflection or uh, uh, examination and research, examination and research. So good news, you may come out stronger, uh, but if you address the doubts uh, properly, properly, properly. And, and, And how do you address the doubts properly? How do you be wise about this? Keep in mind, that wise people don't squander their capital to look for profit. Wise people don't throw something in their hands to grab something in the sky. Wise people uh, also uh, show calculation and deliberation. Wise people are also humble and wise people are honest. All of these things you need to do if you encounter doubts so that doubts will not lead you, will not erode into your certainty that will uh, be your uh, vehicle or your transporter to greater certainty, a catalyst of greater certainty. It can happen. But be honest, you know. And uh, be honest when you trace down or you try to track down your doubts. Try to really be honest. Try to really sit down with yourself and say, do I really have intellectual reservations? Or is this, is, is this because I'm tired? Is this because I'm depressed? Is this because I just got divorced? Is this because, you know, f- try to figure out, be honest. You know, in the after all, those who, who make lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never prosper. So don't cut, you, cut yourself off from his help and assistance and make yourself <laughs> deserving of his wrath. Uh, by lying, you know, by being dishonest. Be honest and, and try to figure out where your doubt is actually coming from. Be honest and try to figure out where your doubt is actually coming from. So that's one thing that is important. The second thing is to be humble. Well, extremely important. Be humble. That is ext- extremely important. Anthony Flew in his book, the, you know, There is a God. Keep in mind that this he wrote this book after he, you know, I don't know what how old he is, but he was like somewhere close to his 70s. Uh, so he says that at, at age 15, I thought that the problem of evil would, would, would be sufficient grounds to uh, disbelieve in God. I thought that the problem of evil by itself, at the age of 15, that is basically the arrogance of knowledge, the arrogance of little knowledge, uh, and haste, you know, and, and arrogance. Uh, because he was, you know, at this level, he, he was like, you know, uh, particularly knowledgeable in, in philosophy. He had this inclination towards philosophy and, and, and so on. But then later, after 50 years, 50 years of diaspora, not believing in God, he realized that these are actually two separate philosophical quests 
that, that they should not be, uh, basically, that the problem of evil is a separate philosophical quest. You, you address it later. But, uh, and, you know, first answer the questions about the existence of God. And if you believe that there is a willful agent who controlled uh, this universe, there is plenty of room to believe that there is some wisdom for the evil and the suffering that takes place in uh, this universe. But it, these are separate philosophical questions. It took him 50 years. And it took, this is one of the main philosophers uh, of the second part of the 20th century. And it took him 50 years to come back, you know, to, you know, to uh, uh, accepting uh, God. So that, do, uh, humble yourself. Little knowledge could be, could be devastating could be to, to you. And that is, you know, we, we've always been talked about, you know, so the half, half a philosopher and half the faqih and the half theologian and half linguist. Uh, Francis Bacon, and I, I, did I send you this, like a statement of Francis Bacon? He said, little philosophy inclines a man to uh, atheism, and depth in philosophy will bring man about to faith. Uh, and the, the problem is you learn a few things, you learn certain things, you, you take logic 101 in college, and then you learn about the anchoring bias and the confirmation bias, and then you want to get rid yourself, you rid yourself from the anchoring bias. Anchoring bias is when people anchor all you know, in, uh, subsequent information on the first thing that they heard about, first concept that they developed, or first thing that they knew about a particular thing. But keep in mind, the anchoring bias is not always a bias. It's not always a bad thing. You know, they teach you in medicine what? That you, you want to converge things down to one diagnosis, right? So if someone, like an asthmatic, comes to you coughing, you think asthma, right? Uh, that could be an anchoring bias, because it, could be, it, it may not be asthma. But likely, if this asthmatic is, is, is wheezing and coughing, it is likely what? It is likely asthma. Most of the time, the anchoring bias is actually not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing to, to think this way. But you learn that you know you should uh, that this uh, confirmation bias and anchoring, and you, you try to figure out you know I, I should not this I should not that, and this this sort of uh, arrogance of little knowledge is the most devastating thing. You know, if 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 one thing will will doom a, the doom a person. That is the arrogance of little knowledge. Uh, so beware of this and humble yourself. You know, it, when, when you talk about walking away from, from your religion, you, you're walking away from a religion of 1.6 billion people. Some of them are a, a, more, a lot more intelligent than you. Uh, you're walking away from a religion that, that billions of people believed throughout 1,400 years. So just like, you know, and, and people of the capacity of Avicenna and, you know, and Averroes and, uh, the, the, and I'm mentioning them before the philosophically oriented in particular. Uh, not that these were the greatest, and you know, certainly Averroes is one of the greatest, uh, Ibn Rushd, uh, but, but, but I'm just mentioning them for, for the philosophically oriented. So uh, humble yourself, it's extremely important. And, and finally, for the individuals, finally, for the individuals, we said you have to be wise, you have to be honest. You have to be humble, and uh, you have also to be calculated. Uh, show deliberation. Don't be hasty. Why are you, why, why are you in a hurry? What is the hurry for? Yeah, like, uh, what, what is the rush to, be, to uh, rushing to become an atheist? What? Why? You know. Uh, at least use Pascal's wager. You know, if if you're at, the, at this level, at least use Pascal's wager. Pascal's wager is, you know, if you will have to bet on something, bet on his existence, because, you know, you will be a little bit, you will sacrifice a little bit of freedoms in this uh, uh, finite life, uh, but then you will rejoice infinitely if he exists. You know, that's Pascal's wager. Certainly, we have certainty in his existence. But if he exists, then... But if he does not exist, you would have sacrificed a little bit in this finite life. So what? You know, everybody turns into dust. And we, 
uh, Pascal's wager did not just come from Pascal. We have it. It actually has been attributed to Ali radiallahu anhu. Uh, but we have it from our righteous predecessors. So Zam al Munajim al Tabibu Kalahuma, the astrologer and the, the physician, they both claimed that um, there will be no resurrection of bodies. I said, go away. If it is true what you're saying, I lose nothing. And if it is true what I say, the loss is all yours. And that is, that is basically Pascal's wager. So at least there is no hurry, there is no rush. And not only, not, not, not only that you, you will not be losing uh, much if you lost this life, but keep in mind that even that is not true. Like atheists don't lead happier or healthier lives. It, there is ample research that proves uh, the opposite. There is ample research that proves the opposite. Now, if this is about you know having difficulty with Islam uh, itself, uh, talk to uh, seek to seek uh, sort of to uh, seek clarification, uh, uh, seek knowledge. You may not be around people who can give you clear answers, but this is. This is a this is an enormous step in your life. You know, if you if you're if you're having doubts, seek uh, certainty, seek confirmation uh, before you seek uh, you know to, to, uh, something that will threaten or your faith. Seek something that will confirm your faith, and look for someone to help you. Look for someone to give you answers. Everything, you know. I told you last night, what is it? What is it that could, you know, aside from the existence of God, because that's a different uh, question, but when it comes to Islam, you know, when it comes to philosophical or moral or scientific concerns, seek, and I'm not going to talk about the details now, but there is an answer for every contention or apprehension or an anxiety or difficulty that you have in your mind. There is a good answer. You may not get it from the first person that you come across or that you ask because, you know, if, if the worth of your deen to you, if the worth of these most important questions, most important answers are in your life, where did we come from, what are we here for, where are we going, uh, is it, it, just like, you know, I asked the imam of my master and he, he didn't say anything. Like, well, uh, and then what do you do? Oh, sure, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Is that what, 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 you know, what those answers are worth to you? Is that what, what dest your destiny is worth to you? You just like pay the visit to the master, then you ask the imam, and that's it. Or I googled it, and that's it. So, so show deliberation. Be honest, be humble, show deliberation. There is no haste. Now, if you're in a hurry to, to, to basically leave Islam to another religion, don't be in a hurry. Even us Muslims, we say to non-Muslims that as long as, you know, uh, as long as you are seeking God, as long as you are seeking God, truly, honestly seeking God, uh, and you die on your way, that God, the God of any religion, is merciful enough to basically uh, show you mercy if you are seeking Him and you died. Uh, on the way to him. So there is no hurry and show deliberation and ask the right questions from uh, the right people. Collectively, as a community, uh, we need to respond to this, you know, uh, uh, unfortunate condition where you, you do it is, I'm, I'm not saying that this is a phenomenon in the sense of you know uh, Muslims by are being overtaken you know the community is being overtaken by doubts or anything but I'm saying that, that there is a there is a significant number of Muslims who are having doubts it is a concerning thing it, it should be a concerning thing and it is not unexpected in an environment like this when Muslims are under a lot of pressure societal pressure it is not unexpected and when Muslims have difficulties, personal difficulties, social difficulties, family difficulties, it's not unexpected. You have the proper environment for the growth uh, of, the, of these uh, doubts. 
So one is to take care of the psychological and the emotional well-being of our brothers and sisters and support them psychologically and emotionally. Because as we said, personal trauma is a major source of doubt. So good companionship, good companionship. When you see someone sitting in the masjid alone, just say, salamu alaikum, and sit down to, next to them for like a minute, particularly if you see them depressed. The, the Prophet would, would, have, <clears throat> would have certainly done this. Just be his ambassador, be his agent. Uh, so just, you know, and, and, and you're coming to the masjid to read the newspaper sometimes. <laughs> you, know, you go to some of the masjid, you go to some of our masjid, and people are reading newspapers from back home. It's just like homesickness. Everybody, the Egyptian, they have al-Ahram and al-Akhbar, and it's just like, and they sit in the masjid, and then they make tea, and, and if someone walks in devastated, you know, they, they'll just not even look at them. Uh, so it, that, that's really sad. So pay attention to this. It is really important. And if there is need for a profession of care, then we, we, we help them out. We point out to them that you do need to see a psychologist. You do need to take care of your depression. You know, it, like, like you do need to take of your like, uh, stress or an anxiety. You do need to take care of your psychological well-being. Then secondly, the, the social network. You know, Muslims feel like misfits in the, you know, in the larger society because of various reasons, obvious reasons. So they do feel, how do we make them up? How do we, as, a, as communities, as, you know, the masajid and organizations and so on, how do we make them up? As people, you know, collectively, we don't always blame it on the organizations. Make your own organization. This is a free country. You can make $50 an hour, apply, you know, send an application, make your own organization. And so how to help out our Muslims, make them up for, for this, help them out, and make them up for the, the, this uh, feeling and create the social network that will provide support for them. Lastly, provide proper knowledge, uh, proper knowledge. It is extremely important that, that we, we, we talk about the issues, we talk about misconceptions, and we talk about uh, mis, misgivings, to the, particularly if they become widespread, it's not like you're exposing people to something that they've never heard before. Talk about the issues that have become widespread and, 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 uh, and talk, to, to talk in a language that, that is understood by the people. Contextualize, pro provide proper explanations, proper application, cr help them cross the bridge between antiquity and modernity, tell them about the proper application of different teachings, different principles, Islamic principles in current uh, realities, uh, and make sure that you learn all of this stuff and make sure that you yourself are not bad representations, negative representations of Islam, because that is one of the uh, main sources of doubt that people have about their religion. We are the main, some, one of the main sources of doubt that people have, have about their religion. We should not be. قل قولي هذا وصفر الله يا لكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهر الله نستغفر لك ونتوب إليك. We'll have five minutes and come back to quickly finish our fifth class. <تصفيق>